can't wait to move out of here. We need to clean this girl off. The rain's been doing most of the work. Doesn't look too bad. Mostly, gotta clean out the crap from last trip. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna go wash this girl off and clean up the interior a little bit. I don't know about you guys, but when you go camping, do you typically unload everything right when you get back? Or does it take you a couple days? <laughs> In our case, this time, it's taken us a few days. Let me vacuum all that up. All right, we are back. So I wanted to make a little bit of a vlog style video just because I haven't really done a ton in the past. Let's open this guy up too. What a mess. That's really the the worst, the downside of living in a duplex that I'm in right now. It's just like, I don't have a garage or anything for my camping gear. So I gotta lug it through the apartment. It's just not fun. I haven't really, done a ton of vlog style videos so I'm excited to kind of do that I just want to clean up the Highlander a little today put it through a wash and vacuum the interior then I wanted to do a little walk around um, with some updates on the build so if you guys haven't checked out my part one Highlander build video yet freaking idiots trying to hit me um, make sure you do so I'll link that here in the video or below in the comments so we're headed down to the self-serve car wash and a pressure wash the exterior get some of the salt off the undercarriage and then vacuum it out wipe it down so um that's what we're looking looking into today all right it looks like there's a lineup so we're sitting here waiting for our turn but i did want to touch on my last video that i uploaded it was a little controversial to most um the video was like Highlander versus Forerunner. And I just want to be clear, like the Highlander and the Forerunner both have their places. I'm not saying the Highlander is going to do everything better than the Forerunner. I just wanted to shed some light on a good cheap alternative that you can get right now. And it's actually really capable. So that's really what I wanted to point out. Um, I've taken my Highlander places that stock Forerunners can go. Um, following a forerunner on 35s or 37s probably is not going to be a good time for me so that's really the difference here i don't do a ton of rock crawling and stuff anymore it's just overlanding getting out to remote areas i want to be comfortable on the road as well as off road and i have a third row and i got this rig for way cheap got her sprayed down interior somewhat vacuumed and wiped down so and I didn't film any of it because it's freaking busy. Everyone's being angsty over here. It's a lot cleaner than it was, that's for sure. And uh, I realize the exterior is gonna get dirty again tomorrow because I'm going out with my buddy to do some uh, testing, we'll say. We're yonking at over there. But yeah, so now we're just gonna go find a spot to park. I'll do a little walk around of the mods that I've added and who knows? This is a vlog, so who knows what could happen. All right, here we go. Here's a part two build walk around of the 2013 limited Toyota Highlander. So a little bit different from last time, nothing too crazy. Um, I did add some ditch lights here. So those are just some cheapo Amazon pod lights that are also their white light as well as amber. Um, they have strobe functions as well. So those are mounted on some second gen Toyota Tacoma brackets that fit pretty much perfect. Um, <clears throat> on the front here, you can see plastic dipped grill and headlight sh or uh, fog light shrouds. I just have the stock tow hook screwed in with a D-ring and some spacers in there so it's not rattling. 
So that's nice. It's actually functional too. I wouldn't want to pull uh, too much with it as far as like recoveries, but that's that. Wheels and tires are the same. I got the trail climbers. Um, what are these? 265, 17 or 70, 17 teams. So, and then the wheels are the vision Manix, I think is what they're called with the faux bead lock. So not a true bead lock, but it gives it that look. And then I'm also running inch and a half wheel spacers on top of the offset of my wheels, which I can't remember. I'll post that up here in the video. So a little bit more poke than usual. Originally, when I first installed the tires, they were flush. And so I wanted a little more poke. So I installed the spacers. They're hub centric and I have the, um, I have some hub centric rings that fit from the OEM hub style to these wheels. So it's a true hub, set, hub centric setup. The pearl color is actually shining really well in this lighting. It's making it look almost tan, which is kind of cool. Have some uh, USA stickers there just for fun. As far as my suspension, I'm running a cheapo eBay spacer on it right now. Nets me about inch and a half of lift. And then I also installed these cheapo spring helpers. So they are doing their job. Nothing crazy about them. Gives it a little more rigidity back there when I'm loading it up. And it helps with the rooftop tent as well. I have a curt hitch. So that helps with towing. I didn't have the tow package on this when I bought it. So I would have liked the OEM hitch because it sits up a little higher, but this was part of a gift that I got. So it uh, works great. Then I have the ARB Esperance tent. This tent is actually really sweet. I'm not gonna open it up right now for you. Um, but my wife and I just got back from a trip in it. It's our first time sleeping in it. And compared to other rooftop tents, I really love it. You know, the features of the hard shell are nice for setting it up, you know, ease of usability there. Also, I felt like with wind noise and stuff, it was a little better because it has a hard side. So you can point that towards the wind. Uh, so you're limiting noise there. Only complaint with it would probably be the, um, the pad, the mattress that comes with it. It's not that it's too thin. I think it was just pretty stiff for my liking. So we're gonna probably add a three inch mattress topper on top of it. Um, but other than that, I loved it. We set up a little movie night in there and it was awesome. So that's pretty much it for the exterior. Let's check out the interior. So coming into the back here, um, this is stuff that I usually keep with me um, all the time just to keep it in here and know that I have it. So I have my eBay traction boards. I tested these out with my old Forerunner and these are probably my favorite traction boards for the price. Um, there's definitely better options out there, but in my mind, these for the price point are pretty, pretty great. And they're, in my opinion, disposable. So as soon as you ruin them, you buy a new set. I actually haven't even used this set yet. Um, but on my Forerunner, I beat the crap out of them. They never, they never broke. They definitely got scuffed up and some of the teeth were, you know, rubbed down. But as far as cracking goes, like these are very flexible and they're probably the best, in my opinion, for the budget options. I also have my Bunker Industry recovery kit. So straps, uh, soft shackles, D-rings, stuff like that in there. My NOCO jump starter battery pack, which I also just use as a battery pack for running the lights on my tent and stuff. Uh, typical tool bag here, socket set, you know, just random things you need, zip ties, tools, wet wipes. You never know when you're gonna need those in the desert. Save it off your greasy hands or whatever. And then a little collapsible shovel, so. This is stuff I pretty much keep in there full time, just to know that I have it. 
Going into the interior um, up here, there's really nothing special. The main thing are these molly panels that I created. Um, so these are 3D printed molly panels that I actually have sold to a few of the group members. They're just plastic uh, with Velcro straps and some paracord. So on this side, I'm running a tourniquet. I really believe in preparedness as far as, you know, being safe and having med kits and stuff. So uh, that's part of it when you're wheeling or out shooting. Tourniquet is a must. So I just keep that up there. It's easy and accessible. And then on the other side, I think in the door panel here, I just have a trauma kit. So it's just a little compact trauma kit. This is more for not necessarily bumps and bruises, more for cuts and gunshot wounds, things like that. Um, you'd probably, if there's a vehicle accident, you'd probably come across needing this more than a bumps and bruises type kit. So I have this ready to go in case I come across an accident or something. Plus, I'm always out shooting and stuff, so you never know. You just want to be safe when you're out having fun. So that's, like I said, I've got the tourniquet up here, some patches, things like that. Um, really, nothing back here. I do potentially want to set up some molly seat panels, uh, especially on the back of these. I want to be able to mount those to the backs of these especially when I'm running the rooftop tent because I don't really have a good spot to mount. So I either want it internally, which would probably be ideal, or I want to figure out building some of the exterior molly panels that hook into the rack um, and put the traction boards there. And right now I'm just running stock rack. I did have a Rhino rack platform on top of the stock rack, but I had to take that off for the tent. So I am looking at options on building my own full roof rack and making it easy so I can interchange the rooftop tent and have attachments on the side and stuff. Some of the future upgrades that I'm doing to it, I want to get a little better suspension setup. So instead of just running a spacer setup on stock coils, I want to do a coilover setup or some kind of heavy duty strut setup. So. Looking into that, I want to get a little more height out of it, but I don't need a ton. Uh, common questions that people ask me as far as my wheel and tire setup. Yes, it did rub. I had to trim a fair amount, which I wasn't too scared of. I still need to clean it out or clean it up as far as my trimming goes. I had to trim a majority of this front piece here. As you can see there, just for the turning radius. Um, and what I'm gonna do is put a piece of fabric or vinyl that's um, riveted in. So it's uh, out of the way, but it's keeping this protected. And then back here, same kind of thing. I had to cut some of the pinch weld and the plastic. It doesn't rub too bad anymore, only maybe at full articulation. And that's just because I haven't trimmed more plastic way than I needed to, but overall it's pretty good. You definitely won't have to do trimming if you're not, if you don't have the offset like I do. But I like the function of the offset as well as the looks. So it's a sacrifice that I was willing to make. And like I said, I come from a forerunner platform where that thing was fully built on 35s and long travel. So I wanted this to look cool too, instead of just a grandma car. And I think the stance really makes a huge difference there. So, and then what else? Light bar is mounted. I went over that in the last video. People asked me how I mounted it. It's really easy. I use the stock or the brackets that came with the light bar. I used those, drilled holes into the aluminum crash bar behind the bumper, bolted it on. You can use self tappers or whatever you want to do but it's really not that hard. Just got wired up. Fog lights, I wanna put some light pods in. So they're more off-road style. Looking into making brackets for that as well. I have LED bulbs in my headlights. I think that's pretty much it for the build. <laughs> There's Becca and Delta in my mess of gear that I need to put away. 
babe, are you so excited to get into our house so we can actually have a garage for all our gear and be organized? Yeah. I think I'm this. You working? Mm -hmm. Say hi, Delta. Hello. <laughs> oh, wow, doing tricks. I'm sure tricks. be even more excited to move into the new house. There'll be more space mm -hmm. for around. Yeah. And so now my task is, since this is a vlog, I'm vlogging my experience today, just so you don't pick up. Um, all this crap has to somehow be put in there. Cause every time we go camping, we gotta take it out from here, lug it all the way out to the cars, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So Delta, are you gonna help me? Come help me. You think, are you making fun of me? I'm not making fun of you, I just said you're funny. Oh, well I'm vlogging. This is what vloggers do, okay. So, what we're gonna do here, I probably have too much crap to be honest. Oh, okay, that's heavy. This is our 72 hour kit. So I wanna keep that. Too much stuff. Okay, that's gonna go there. And then, oh, we need to empty that cooler too. There's no ice in it, right? Oh, I forgot about this stuff. Oh, it's pretty much just. Oh, there's bananas in there. Jeez. Why camping should not be work, you know what I mean? Yeah. It should be fun. Mm -hmm. Delta, you clean this out, okay? Clean it out. Yep, thanks. Okay. Alrighty. What's in here? Do we need anything out of this? I don't think so. I think the pans are in there. Okay, let's put that on. Okay, step one, down. If you guys want any 3D printed stuff, I'm selling Molly panels. Hit me up. Put this under there. Okay, now let's put those back. If you guys want a camping hack and you got a lover, this is what you need to do. In most cases, it'll work. Some it won't. But we zip our sleeping bags together. Mostly because Becca gets really cold and I'm a furnace. So. You don't love it? I think your sleeping bag's not as ideal because it's lower, you know what I'm saying? But... I think it's because I slept on your side and your side is smaller and I didn't like that. My side's not smaller. It felt smaller than mine. It's elastic, so maybe it hugs you a little more. But anyways, you can zip your sleeping bags together. Have one big sleeping bag. They don't need to be the same brand or anything. They just need to be... One side needs to be a left side zipper. The other side needs to be a right side zipper. So try it out. It's kind of fun. And just like that. They are bagged up. I got a fine spot. All the way. Just right there for now. Good enough. Now, got some work to finish. Welcome to the office. I got a little bit of work to finish for my day job, and then I'm gonna start editing videos and stuff. Um, 
Tomorrow we are gonna go out and take some footage, so that'll be cool. I think our plan is to probably go out somewhere similar to where we we're camping. My buddy has a fourth gen 4Runner, the V8. And so we really wanna compare the two. I know my last video was on 4Runner versus Highlander. Well, we're actually gonna compare how capable they are. And so kind of to have a Highlander on the same level as a 4Runner, pretty much needs a small lift and all terrains, which most people are gonna do that to a 4Runner anyways. And so this should be a pretty even comparison. I, in my opinion, I think the Highlander is way more capable than we think it is. And it's plenty capable for the type of stuff that majority of us do. So we're gonna go hit some obstacles, see, you know, some of the pain points of the Highlander where it doesn't, you know, quite add up. Same thing with the Forerunner and just kind of compare the two and see what happens. So I'm gonna plan for that and then I'll post a video. Work is pretty much done. So just kind of last minute stuff before the weekend. I do sales for online marketing for auto repair shops. So um, a lot of stuff trickles in, but looks like everything's pretty much squared away and my meetings are scheduled for next week that need to be. So pretty much the rest of the day, um, unless anything comes through, I'm gonna start working on my videos I really want to create some more content so I can post regularly. So I'm just trying to build up those. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to plan some of tomorrow's trip as well. Going out with my buddy Cameron, like I said before. So I'm going to plan out a route and maybe put together some kind of script slash um, bullet points on what I want to speak about. And then we'll go from there. So just wanted to give you guys kind of a behind the scenes of the YouTube channel. Uh, I know in the past I've been kind of slacking on it and so I really have set goals for this new year to not only make money with my YouTube channel so I can be supported in that and you know create more content more quality for that um, I just really enjoy it too so I have goals to really up the production quality update you know the consistency with it plus being in marketing I have a little better understanding of how to market um, so I'm going to start implementing some of that and doing some SEO for my videos. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for today's video. I appreciate you guys stopping in on a day in the life of Ty. Uh, so hopefully you liked it. And if I get good feedback, I'll start doing some more of these. So um, I think it would be kind of fun to go through different stores like Bass Pro Shops, Walmart, things like that and put together videos on stuff I buy for camping trips, things like that. So I just like the vlog style videos and I think it would be kind of cool to tap into more of that. I also have plans, you know, for flipping motorcycles and vehicles when I'm in the new place. And so I'm gonna provide more content for that as well. So anyways, long story short, I appreciate you guys. Um, I recently have been way more motivated to you know, provide content for you guys based off of the feedback I've been receiving. So I really appreciate it. Views have gone up, subscriptions have gone up. So just keep it up and uh, we'll see you in the next one.